Welcome back, young Jedis. It is now time to learn the components that you will see in your certifications. Uh, ROM, RAM, NVRAM, and Flash. Those are the four that you need to know. Okay? That's it. Don't go crazy on it. Those are the four that you need to know. What you need to know is what works on those four different components and obviously the boot process. But first, we're going to learn these four components and what's on them. ROM, what is normally on there? First, I'm going to say it in order, post. Then you have a bootstrap. Then you have a mini iOS. And then you have a dark, dirty place called ramen. Okay? ROM, this is where everything starts, right? We all know this from, you know, desktop computers, what have you. First thing that happens is the post, all right? From the post, then goes the bootstrap. The bootstrap looks for the flash. Flash looks for enemy RAM, finds whatever's in there. And if there's any configs, boom, loads the config. You see the pound signs, voila, everything's up in RAM. All right, but the first thing that happens is post. Then we go to the bootstrap. The mini iOS, think of it as a troubleshooting, like F5 in Windows, where you go to a safe mode type of, uh, type of thing, where you can have just the minimal amount of information so you can do what you need to do. And you can actually have it to boot to that if you wanted to using boot system commands and deliberately boot, and I believe it's 20, 0x2101, or if I remember correctly, uh, to boot into that deliberately. And then ROMIN. ROMIN stands for ROM Monitor Mode. Now, if you find yourself and you didn't do anything to be in ROMIN, and all of a sudden you are in ROMIN, that's a problem, all right? And the way ramen will look like, it will look just like that. We'll say ramen, and then you will see uh, number one, let's say, and then the, and no, and then that. If you find yourself in that prompt in your router, that's a problem, if you didn't do it deliberately, because that will give you an indication that, hey, your iOS, meaning your flash, your, well, your operating system, I'm sorry, which exists in your flash, is missing, or corrupted, missing or corrupted. And we'll learn how to change settings and I'll show you the, while well, you'll show you now. I mean, well, I'm already here, TFTP, oh, case sensitive. When you're in here, TFTP, D and LD. There's something that's above the CCNA, so I'm not gonna get too deep in it, but just so you know, if you do find yourself in ramen and it is because your, your operating system is missing or corrupted and you need to put a new one, you need to type TFTP DNLD. And this whole set of instructions, and I'll show it to you. This whole set of instructions will go ahead and come out, and you gotta type it per verbatim. It is a royal pain. Okay, if you don't type it, if you mistype it, it's case sensitive, the whole nine yards. Okay, and then from a TFTP server, that's what that means. TFTP download. Uh, you actually upload. So I don't know why they say download, but anyway you would upload a new iOS into the, uh, the router, okay? So you definitely don't want to find yourself in ramen, but ramen does exist, and you can boot into it deliberately as well, but you do not want to find yourself there. The next thing I have here is RAM. RAM, as we know, ROM, before I move on, ROM is read-only memory, all right? It's always going to be there. It's not going anywhere. RAM is random access memory, and that's we know is volatile. We know this. So when you're there configuring your heart out, and you're typing this, and you're typing that, and there's a power outage, pew, and you didn't save your information, guess what? Now it's gone, all right? So definitely RAM, what do we have in RAM? Running, and I'm just gonna put run. Run, you have your run, which is your running config, okay? You have your ARP cache, you have your routing table, and you have your packet buffers, right? All these things are things that are changeable, they're volatile, that can change on a constant moment. Uh, your routing table is ever changing if you're putting in new networks or taking out networks. So this is ever changing, so is your ARP cache. That's going to be ever changing when you see things come in and out. And definitely the run. 
Remember, in the CCNA, you have to do a copy, run, start. What does that mean? You want to copy your run, what's in RAM, into your start, which is enemy RAM. All right, so that's what that means. That's what that means. Can you do copy, run, start in the exam? I am pretty sure you can. Uh, some people say, no, you got to type the whole thing. Copy, running, hyphen, config, start a hyphen, hyphen, config. This is, what I, this is my opinion. This is my, what I, I, my advice to you. If you're taking the test, type copy, run, start. If it works, beautiful. If it gives you an error, then type the whole thing. Okay? Because uh, you're not going to be configuring routers from scratch. You will be here in this course, but you won't be doing it in the examination. So that is what works, in, or that's what RAM handles. All right? The, the run, the ARP cache, the routing tables, more specifically, and packet buffers. Enemy RAM... That's like your hard drive, your hard drive or your router. So that's going to hold your start, your startup config. Think of it as your HDD, right? Your hard disk drive. That's where your, that's your start. That's where you're going to copy, run, start. So when you're, that's why people tell me last, why do you always do show start? Because I want to make sure that my students copy their information. Because I do things deliberately. Uh, I know they don't do it, so I tell them, reload your routers. And then when they reload, they come back to an empty configuration. And I said, why didn't you, I told you to copy as you go. Because that's another question that people ask me. Laz, when should we copy our configurations? Whenever you want. There's no rule that states after five lines, copy your configuration. It's like when you're doing a resume or you're doing a letter to your loved one. Uh, are you going to wait to the very end of this beautiful heartfelt letter that you wrote. Shakespeare couldn't have done better himself. Uh, are you going to go ahead and then save? Or are you going to save as you go? It's the same thing here. You save as you go. So anytime you do, let's say, the administrative configurations, copy, run, start. And then we do the interfaces, copy, run, start. Uh, we added an IP address to an interface, copy, run, start. We configure the writing protocol, copy, run, start. You get my meaning, right? That's just the way it is. After you do your configuration, copy, run, start. I'm not saying to do it every line, but every so often, just in case. You never know what may happen. You know, your dog, your little brother, your little sister, your grandma, she's in a happy, gullible mood, and she wants to come by and unplug your, <laughs> unplug your router just for the heck of it. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't, <laughs> that's not good. So make sure you copy your configurations. Copy, run, start. Now, I will admit, I create bad habits for my students. And I'll tell you what I mean. Oops, not there. And friggin' notepad. You guys must be, and you'll learn all this, you'll be in privilege mode in your test, and you have to do copy, run, start. Enter, and it's going to ask you to confirm, and hit enter again, right? So I, since I'm so used to it, but I always tell people, don't do this. You can't do it on the test. I always do this, WR, or do WR, depending on where I'm in the router. But if I'm in purge mode, I just do WR, or even sometimes just W, all right? That's to write. That's just something, you, you know, you're in the field, you do this, just to do it quick. But in the test, in the test, you have to do copy, run, start. I mean, I'll, I'll tab, I'll up arrow, I'll do WR. All right, guys, do a control Z, WR, boom, we're done. That's fine for the lab so we can move forward in what we're doing, especially when we're in the classroom with the live routers. That's a different story uh, because, you know, the real routers are not like the packet tracer. Whoop, they just boot up, you know, lightning speed or nothing like that. So they take their time. So we try to do things as fast as possible. But for certification purposes, for the CCNA, you got to do things in certain orders. You got to go back to privilege mode. You got to do a copy, run, start. You got to do the whole command. They don't allow you to do keyboard shortcuts like Control Z or anything like that. So remember that. So try to learn the whole spelling of the commands, uh, especially I really get bad when I go to layer two, because uh, for whatever reason in my brain. When I type switch port, instead of doing TCH, I do THC. 
and I gotta keep thinking T C H T C H. So that's how you say tab. You know what I mean? So learn learn the spelling, the full spelling of the command in case you can do the shortcut. All right, because I do I, I will be giving you bad habits, but I will be warning you of the bad habits as well. Okay, now the last component that we're gonna talk about is the flash, and that's where your iOS sits. That's where your iOS sits. And that's the most important one. And if you, I don't have the packet trace for open. There you go. Let's open it up real quick. Because to look at these different things, let's take out, I always use 1841 because that's the router that I have here in the classroom. All right. The flashcard. Goes right there. Where is it? Right there. All right. It's a compact flash card. You put it right there. Let me see if I can take it. I got a router down here. I'm going to go down here real quick. I'm going to pop it out. Okay. That's what it looks like right there. A little compact flash card. I hope you can see that. And make it closer. All right. There you go. So this is obviously physical security is one of your main concerns. All right, nobody you know, should be walking around where they can just press that button and take your flash card. All right, so this, uh, 64 megabytes, uh, that's important to know. That's important to know, all right, how much flash you have. Uh, one of the questions that you may encounter on your test, like any test, I guess, that deals with, hey, if you're going to upgrade an operating system, how much RAM, how much hard drive space, uh, in this case, how much flash, you need to have that is important because these iOS's are decompressed into RAM so that means they're compressed in here so it could be a 64 megabyte size uh, flash iOS right the operating system but you only have 32 megabytes of RAM now it can't decompress into RAM and I found that out the hard way I didn't pay attention to what I was supposed to I'm gonna go put this back okay let me put it back down here. Give me a second. I'm sure it goes in. Oh, wait a minute. All right. All right, so I'll put that back in there. So now you know what the flash card looks like. Make sure nobody takes that out, okay? Especially if the router's on. So definitely, but the good thing about that is if that iOS goes bad and you have an extra 1841, because these are specific, these are specific to the series of routers. You just can't get a 2600 uh, router, take the flash card out and put it in an 1800 series. You can't do that. It's gotta be series specific, series specific. And the way you would look at that, and we'll do it several times, I'm gonna say no here, and you'll learn soon enough if you don't know already why you would say no there. Show ver, and we're gonna go down, and this gives you a whole bunch of information right here it's telling you the RAM, you have these two numbers and it'll tell you the RAM that you have, okay? It's telling you the fast Ethernet cards, how much kilobytes you have of NVRAM, you don't need that many, and then of course you have how much in kilobytes uh, you would have for your flash. So that's important and this is also, as we get into the registry, this is later on, this is important to know as well. So the show version command, the show version command shows you a lot of different things one of which is obviously the size that I just showed you of your RAM your NVRAM and your flash but also this guy right here right your flash okay you see that name it used to be very cryptic now it's not so cryptic not so cryptic all right but at least we know that this is hey is advanced IP services so we know more or less what it's dealing with, all right? So it gives us, and it says a 15T1 iOS. So now there, that is your iOS. Now, I always tell my students when we're actually going to copy this to a TFTP server, the best command to type is show flash. There's your flash right there. I'll bring this up a little bit higher, okay? There's your, there's your flash file right there because you, you're going to copy paste because to write that down, very easy to make a mistake. So you copy and then you paste that when you're supposed to. So those are your four components. Will you be asked questions on those four components? Yes, you will. You'll be asked questions on the boot process. 
you'll be asked questions what runs on those components okay so you need to know you need to know uh, and what happens if something's missing or if you find yourself in this prompt what does that mean so you need to know exactly these different components okay so ROM is the first thing right that has the post the first thing that happens then the bootstrap bootstrap takes over looks for the iOS once the iOS is found which by default is in flash then uh, flash looks for the NVRAM important flash looks for the NVRAM to see what configuration is in there configuration registry okay getting a little ahead of myself but that's okay and then if there is some sort of it says hey look at it look at it see, see what's there and then it says oh okay uh, there's configurations in this startup config file let me load them and then great then you see all these pound signs which is decompressing the operating system into RAM and boom now you can go ahead and log in and start working and doing your thing all right so these are your four components and a very brief uh, introduction to the boot up process of the router all right so this is it i'll see you in the next section